You're listening to the Noon Show on Good Time Oldies 1290 at 102.7 WIRL. All right, welcome back. It's time for our Facets of FS segment with Dr. David Powell. He joins us, I believe, for the first time. He's Weed Science Technical Manager. David, how are you? Uh, Very good. How are you? Not so bad. A lot better yesterday, and for a guy that doesn't like wind and pollen and dust and all of that, uh, I could be better, but nobody wants to hear those complaints. Let's talk about uh, some springtime thoughts and maybe even some summertime thoughts, too. A couple of topics we want to talk about. One is sun death syndrome in soybeans, and one is the use of fungicides. I guess that could be for corn or for soybeans, but thinking about SDS, first of all, uh, what can we do... Or what should we do besides a planting date? Are there things we can do to to help prevent that from being involved in our fields? Oh yeah, there there's quite a bit of options for sudden death syndrome, and uh, really we didn't have a, a whole lot of discussion about SDS until this last year when we saw it all throughout the entire western portion of Illinois and and in southern Iowa. Um, we can uh, definitely, besides planning later, that is one thing that is definitely going to help help out. I've been uh, speaking with a lot of our crop specialists, and we talk about we want to make sure that our soil temps are above 60 degrees Fahrenheit when we plant at that four-inch level uh, in the soil. Uh, and really, I, I tried to explain to them that last year we planted a lot at around uh, May 6th time frame. And our soils were barely above 50 degrees, and that caused a lot of our issues with uh, uh, sudden death. But we know that that throughout the season, uh, we're starting to plant a lot earlier because we get our better yields. Although we have this disease to, to that we have that challenges us. So besides planting earlier, we can definitely plant resistant varieties. Uh, we saw this year in our field trials that we see a lot of differences between our varieties and how they respond to sudden death. So we got a lot of good ratings this year in our high soy uh, brand, and we're going to be able to better uh, uh, help you decide which variety is best for sudden death if that's your your disease of concern. Besides planting resistant varieties, we can also improve drainage. We know that sudden death really likes to target the plant early in the season. So as soon as that soybean plant comes up, that's when we have uh, problems. That's when it's infe- infecting the soybeans. So cool, wet conditions early in the season. So if we improve drainage, we don't have that uh, that uh, moisture, we're a lot less likely to have sudden death. And uh, I'm assuming you're asking the sudden death question, especially since we started. We have a few new products on the market this year. We have Elevo and uh, Mertec from uh, Bayer and Syngenta, respectively. And those are a couple of options as a seed treatment that are going to help us manage our sudden death that may be very useful, especially if we're going out uh, in challenging conditions early in the season uh, before our soil temps reach 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. As a weed science guy, like you talked about drainage, can can the weeds have, I mean, we're getting kind of below root systems, I assume, when we're talking about drainage, but uh, how, how can managing the weeds also help us with that sort of thing, or can it? Are those two things uh, uh, apples and oranges? Well, you know, uh, essentially from the disease standpoint of sudden death syndrome, they're they're really independent of each other, but definitely improving drainage as far as tile uh, underground is going to improve our SDS, our disease management, but it's also going to improve our weed management in many cases because when we have wet conditions, we get drowned out soils where we have holes in the crop canopy, and that's a really a place where weeds really like to, to take hold, and they're really a luxurious consumers of our, of our, of our, uh, uh, of our nutrients like nitrogen. So they're going to definitely take any sort of, of nutrient available, and they're going to compete with our crops. So, so increasing our drainage is going to have a benefit both with our diseases as well as our, as our uh, weeds. And the other thing I wanted to ask you about was – fungicides, I guess that could go for corn or soybeans, and some people probably debate or wonder on a regular basis if it is a necessary thing to do, and part of that could be just on the margins and a lower price for corn may say, well, maybe not, but are there benefits to that, or is that just a case-by-case basis? 
Uh, you know, uh, I get asked that question quite a bit, and, and, and everybody wants a yes or a no answer. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's just not quite that easy. I, I always like to ask them a lot of follow-up questions. Um, in the corn side especially, uh, are you planning a susceptible hybrid? Because if you are, you're more likely to get a benefit. Are the conditions right for the disease? So this year we had a cool, wet summer. We had a lot of days in the upper 70s, lower 80s with a lot of uh, moisture, whether that be rainfall or extended dews on the leaf surface. That's what caused a lot of our northern corn leaf blight to, to become so dramatic and caused some yield loss this year. So a fungicide was definitely worth it. I also ask, what kind of ground are you on? If you're, if you're on some of your more productive land, you're more likely to get a response. So as well as uh, in many cases, I ask a lot of things about residue. If you're in a no-till environment, you're more likely to have problems with disease. Uh, are you rotating? So uh, if you are on a corn-on-corn -corn basis, you're more likely to have problems with disease. So if you answered those questions and a lot of those stack up against your favor, you're more likely to find a fungicide beneficial. Uh, overall, a lot of research shows that we get a 12 to 15 bushel increase when we use a fungicide. So. Uh, that's uh, that's over several years, and that's over if you have a higher productive ground, the conditions are right for the disease, you're in a no-till environment on a corn on corn, and you have a susceptible hybrid. And even at today's prices, even below today's prices of 350, that that means that we have a six to 1650 uh, increase in profits per acre. And I think that that is probably even more worth using a fungicide uh, with our lower commodity prices because our margins are so much tighter. That, uh, that that extra six to sixteen fifty that's definitely a, a higher portion of our income, our profits in this upcoming season. So it really depends on the ground that we're at and the conditions that we we are running to during the season. But yes, it can definitely be worth it, and it could definitely uh, be the difference between uh, breaking even and making a lot of money during the season. Now, I know with weeds, there's a lot of talk about rotating chemicals. If you did something that worked last year, don't do it again because that's how resistance builds is this case the same for fungicides yeah uh, the there's a lot less fungicide options on the market i mean we have a lot of different uh, active ingredients but we're typically using two or three sites of action or modes of action we're using our strobularins quite a bit which is one group we're using our trizols which is another group and we're starting to use more of our SDHIs, which are another group of fungicides. So uh, I would say that we're not at a point now where we're using fungicides so widespread that we're seeing a lot of resistance issues, but it definitely is something that we need to be concerned about, um, make sure that we're uh, only using these products when we need them. Don't just go out uh, and apply them prophylactically. So the, the, big, the big goal here really goes back to integrated pest management, making sure there's a need for that fungicide. And if there is, go ahead and apply it and make sure that, we, uh, that we're managing our diseases so that we can make sure that we have our increased yields and protect our yields that we want for this upcoming season. I want to ask another what I think is a weed science type of question. It, we want to get these things as early as possible, especially things like Palmer and O'Mare's tail. They can just grow so fast. We've got to get them early. And is there a balance in there? Have you have you noticed in whether that's recently or over time the balance between getting these weeds early and not injuring those precious seeds that we just planted? Yeah, that that's always a struggle. So uh, my PhD work was actually on how to manage Palmer amaranth. So that's a really quite a bit in my wheelhouse compared to our mare's tail. The the struggle really becomes we want to burn our mare's tail down and we want to control our mare's tail before we plant in soybeans. If we have any sort of mare's tail that's up when our soybeans emerge out of the ground, we have very limited options for managing it in crops. So that's one side of it. The other side of it is, is I want to make sure that we have a good, effective pre-emergence herbicide on that, that her, on that ground right as close to planting as possible. And that doesn't always match up. So we want that pre-emergence herbicide as close to planting as possible to manage the Palmer amaranth that might come up shortly after planting. But if we wait till right at, at planting, lots of times we can have mare's tail that's so tall, so out of control, that it's hard to control with herbicides. So many times you have to take a look at the ground uh, that you're on, 
when you think you're going to get planted because sometimes we may need to to run across that land a couple of times uh, at planting. So wants to burn down the mare's tail, wants to uh, to get our pre-emergence herbicide on. The other option that we have besides doing that is uh, I know it's the wrong time of year to to talk about herbicides in this manner, but typically. If we get on a fall applied herbicide after we get our crops out in the fall, we can manage our mare's tail so it's not a problem this time of year. There's no mare's tail out there, and so we only have to come in one one time and, and put on our pre-emergence herbicide application to control our water hemp or our palmer amaranth. I need to scoot, but I do want to ask, you, you recently did get your Ph.D. I think of palmer still as something that came from the south, but didn't you get your, did you get your Ph.D. from Michigan State? Yeah, I got my uh, Ph.D. from Michigan State. It actually is one of those uh, weeds that was found in, in uh, Michigan in 2010. So it's, it's definitely spreading across a lot of regions in the upper Midwest, and it's going to be a weed that's very challenging for, for us in Illinois as well as the whole United States. Wow, that's frightening. All right, thanks so much for the time, though. Appreciate it. Hopefully we'll talk to you again. Thanks, David.